It's that time again. This is Katni with Python on Hardware News. Every week, we put together the Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. It's available through adafruitdaily.com. Head over there to sign up and see all of the past and current newsletters. Or tune in each week to hear what's going on. Adafruit continues to run with 100% of employees being paid and continuing to work. Most are working remotely, with a few working in the Adafruit factory as an essential service and business under New York City Executive Order to provide assistance with the COVID-19 outbreak. We continue to manufacture face masks to help alleviate the demand. Check out the Adafruit blog for photo chronicles from Phil and Lamore. We'll keep posting updates to the blog and social media as we continue to do what we can to help. CircuitPython 5.1.0 Release Candidate 0 is out. As long as no major issues are found, it will be released as 5.1.0 later this week. It comes with many new features, including Microlab, a NumPy-like fast vector module that allows you to perform mathematical operations 10 to 50 times as fast as CircuitPython alone. It is enabled on most boards except those with SAMD21 microcontrollers. Check out the Adafruit Learn system for a guide on using Microlab. And thanks to Jeff and Zoltan for all the work. Support for F-strings, a more convenient way to build strings dynamically. This is also enabled for most boards except for those with SAMD21 microcontrollers. Thanks to Josh Klar and Jeff for getting this implemented. We have a number of STM-related updates included thanks to Lucian and the addition of a number of new boards. Thank you to everyone who is using, testing, contributing to CircuitPython, and helping out and participating on GitHub and Discord. The new Hackspace magazine, issue 29, includes a guide to coding a controller for a Frogger-like game in CircuitPython. The Adafruit Circuit Playground Bluefruit, or Express, is used as a tilt sensor controller. The author writes, The tribute to this game in the new Code the Classics Volume 1 book is called Infinite Bunner, and works in much the same way, except you control a bunny. All of this hopping got us thinking about a controller. Our initial idea was that since the animals jump, so should the controller. The accelerometer can detect freefall, so it shouldn't be too hard to convert those into button presses. However, it turns out that computer-controlled frogs and rabbits can jump much, much faster than humans can, and we really struggled to get a working game mechanic, so we compromised a little and worked with flicks. Check it out at hackspace.raspberrypi.org. Josh Lowe has provided an update on the state of EduBlocks, a tool to make the transition from Scratch to Python easy via drag and drop Python. Updates include a new loading screen, updated mode selector, better support for adding extensions, an account system, and a learning portal update. You can see the new updates at beta.app.eduBlocks.org, and anything will be uploaded there too. Josh posts, I'd really like to get some feedback from you about the changes I've made, as this is really helpful for me to know. Greg posts to Twitter a clip of using a circuit playground and gizmo display to move a sprite on the screen with collision detection using circuit Python. Brian from the Adafruit team has created an apps menu for the Open Hardware Summit wrist badge. Clock Minima is a modular clock builder in CircuitPython from Cedar Grove Studios. It provides simultaneous time output to the serial console, LED display, and display I.O. based screen. CircuitPython slithers its way onto the Zincberry single board computer. Jacob on Twitter creates an inexpensive portable carbon dioxide meter with CircuitPython the hollowing, and a Grove CO2 sensor. Joey Castillo is refining a thermometer hat project using a custom SAMD21E board programmable in CircuitPython and Arduino. Kevin is working on adding lights and sound to his son's fire truck bed using Circuit Playground Express, NeoPixels, and CircuitPython. 
Alvaro is using a Pi portal to display cases of COVID-19 using CircuitPython. Postman.com is hosting a collection of programmable APIs for accessing various COVID-19 related data on the web. Kano posts about adding a Python GUI to their project using PyQt and PySide2. This week, six new boards were added to CircuitPython, including the Commander, a handheld button and LED board featuring the Atmel SAMD21 microcontroller. John Park published a new guide this week for the Clue and the Bonsai Buckaroo showing how to create a plant care bot that displays fun graphics to indicate the state of your plant, all using CircuitPython. Brian finished up the DS1841 library, including support for manually setting the wiper, editing and using the LUT, and enabling or disabling the temperature compensation feature. Now that we have a log potentiometer, he hopes to see more people using these handy little I2C helpers to give them programmatic control over parts of their circuit. Dan is in the Bluetooth Low Energy Device of the Week world and is currently working on CircuitPython BLE drivers to connect a couple of different low-cost pulse oximeters. He's reliably getting data from one and found the other one difficult to work with. Finally, the PyCon US 2020 team announced planned talks, tutorials, posters, and much more online. To participate, go to the PyCon US 2020 remote page and subscribe to receive five to eight email notifications over the next six weeks for published online content. Also, you may subscribe to the PyCon 2020 YouTube channel. Expected content includes recorded talks and tutorials, online summit and hatchery programs, poster presenters sharing their creations, startup row company presentations, and sponsor workshop videos and job postings. The organizers appreciate the community's patience as they work through the logistics of gathering and uploading the recordings. The goal is to begin providing content about April 15th, 2020, right when PyCon was scheduled to begin. And that is your Python on Hardware news for this week.